Hey guys, my name is Garrett Lamoro. I'm at, from Walker County, Alabama, and I'm a 2020-2021 uh, state ambassador for 4-H. And here today we have Anna Brooklier. She's a pharmacist at Brooklier Pharmacy, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. My name's Anna Brooklier. Um, I graduated from Auburn in 1983 from the School of Pharmacy. Um, and um, my brother and father are also pharmacists, and they also graduated from the School of Pharmacy there in Auburn. My experience is uh, a little over 30 years at UAB, which was fun because UAB was innovative, but so was my family's business, very innovative on the, on the cutting edge. So I also worked at Brooklier Pharmacy, which is my family's uh, business. So I worked at UAB for about 30 years. But one day a week, I still worked overtime at the drugstore to keep up that end of my license to see what's going on in the outside world. So I've had two jobs and um, um, that's it. All my life, I've had two jobs. Okay. And I have a few questions for you for the uh, kids who want to know and go into that field. Um, what influenced you the most to be in this field and profession? Um, I think I had been around people who were physicians and nurses and pharmacists. And I mm -hmm. um, was very interested in the medical field um, because there's a lot of elderly people that really don't know how to take their medicine. And I watched sort of helping helping my dad at the drugstore. and. Um, like I said, just I saw how a lot of the nurses carried themselves professionally. Mm -hmm. And I was just that that sort of led me to the healthcare profession in general. And then working at the drugstore, I went from stocking shelves to helping my dad in the back in the prescription department when I was old enough. So that probably led me um, to that type of profession. And I was pretty decent in math. So yeah. If math, math and science skills are good, then, and I preferred it over English or, or anything like that. Um, yeah. It was a little, little bit artistic, but I just didn't, just preferred that over history and English. Yeah. And you I, did say you went to Auburn, right? Yes. I, I went to uh, high school in Birmingham, uh, John Carroll High School, and then I went to Auburn straight out of high school. Um, and back then, the curriculum was five years and a year of internship. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that it's um, more or closer to six years. Uh, and they come out with a doctor of pharmacy uh, mm -hmm. nowadays. But yes, I did go to Auburn University. And what was your major? Uh, it was pharmacy. You, what mm -hmm. you do is... It's it's very close to having a major in chemistry, but yeah. it is considered pharmacy. Yeah, you go. We went two pre pharmacy years and three professional, and um, it, yeah, your your major is pharmacy. But if you want to look at it from a standpoint of before I got in there, you had to take a lot of chemistry and a lot of math. Yeah, and um, like looking towards a day in your job, what is it like? Like, what's the hardships? What's what makes you keep going throughout the day? Okay, well, let's, you know, like I said, I, I had two, two different jobs. Mm -hmm. At UAB, um, it was a little bit different than working at the drugstore. At UAB, you walk out, walk in very early in the morning, about 6.30. Go out to the nursing unit, see if, see if they had any needs. Go back to the pharmacy and take the beeper from the night shift. <laughs> and I would um, get on the computer. Very innovative at UAB. It would the computer would prior, prior, sort of prioritize the um, now orders versus the stat orders versus an order that wasn't due till later on in the day. So I would go through those orders and see what the needs of the nursing units were at that time. I would also go through people's lab work to see if and there needed to be any antibiotic changes. And I would call the doctors later on in life there were nurse practitioners. You wouldn't have to call the doctor. You could go through the nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. And I would adjust people's antibiotics based on their lab results. Yeah. So we got to be a little bit more clinical, the more innovative 
uh, UAB guy down the road. Yeah. And the, go ahead. Oh, you're good. And at the drugstore, a day in my life would be get here early before the customers get here. Because nowadays you have orders coming in over the phone, over the fax. People can yes. call in the call in all over the night through the night. Um, as far as the drugstore is concerned, we're innovative in in multiple ways. Uh, my dad was the very first in the state of Alabama to have patient profiles before there were computers. Wow. Uh, he was one of the he was one of the first ones to have. Um, and you've seen it, Garrett, is our robot, which mm -hmm. will, uh, it carries the top hundred drugs. And it not only does it count the medicine, it sticks it in a bottle and it labels it. And you've seen that, Garrett. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's pretty incredible to see that, to, to see that robot work. But we're also innovative in that we do compounds for not just humans, but for dogs and cats. So we yes. have a following with veterinarians um, in the state. We do a lot of creams. We do a lot of female creams, uh, hormonal creams um, for many of the um, physicians in town as well. Yeah, and I've been at this job for a little bit over eight months, and you really fall in love with it because of all of the different things that it uh, incorporates and the people that you help and the people that you see. And you just don't understand how important it is until you're in it and how much you fall for it from the very beginning. Correct. And it's, it's, um, it's exciting because you have different, you have different types of compounds. You know, you were, you were here during a very innovative time or a very unprecedented time when we had COVID. So that was the very first time we ever did um, curbside. Not only that, we compounded hand sanitizer. We have never yeah. done that. So yeah. that was very innovative. And of course, the School of Pharmacy, you found this out. This, they did this at Auburn as well. And the pharmacy yeah. students that came here, you learned from them and let, they learned from you mm -hmm. um, during that time that you were here. Yeah, it's especially when I was in it, it's you, it's almost like you come in, you can't have, you have to have an open mind because of all the things that go on. It's, every day is different. There's something new every day. And that's, that's what's so interesting and what, how, why I fell in love with pharmacy from being there. Speaking of open-minded, Garrett, um, I'm glad you mentioned that because all I wanted to do was retail when I first got into that. Mm -hmm. But thank goodness for Auburn, they wanted us to see both sides. So they made us go to a drugstore for half the time and they made us go to a hospital half the time. Yeah. I didn't realize how much I would like the hospital. So I ended up doing a rotation at a hospital in Montgomery and I found out that I would rather do that for a while. So, yes. so people need to know that there is hospital pharmacy, there is retail pharmacy, there is um, compound pharmacy. So there's different kinds. Back mm -hmm. in the day, we could, you, could, you could do drug rep. Um, you could also be a drug rep being a pharmacist. Yes. Um, they're a little bit few and far between now. Then you have radiologics. So you can do that as well. So yeah, yeah keep, keep an open mind. Uh, that would be my advice to a pharmacy student is to keep an open mind because there's different um, paths that you can go. Mm. So I, I heard you notice or say that your advice to a pharmacy student would be that. But to the kids that are listening, what advice would you give them when they're deciding what they want to be or they're getting interested in pharmacy? What advice would you be, give them if they want to go into that field? Well, I would... Um, I would advise them try to get on at a hospital or a drugstore, basically mm -hmm. like you did. You could, you could be an assistant at the nursing unit and start out. It's what they call a patient care tech uh, mm -hmm. at a hospital. Start from the bottom up. That's what I did. I was stocking shelves just like you did. Of course you, you did a little bit of everything. And, during, yeah. and through a pandemic, you did a little bit more than a lot of people would have learned. But my advice to somebody 
uh, wanting to start out is just, if you can't get a job in the medical field, just get a job. Yes. Make sure from a professional standpoint, you give these people a two week notice because people look at this, but mm-hmm. my recommendation would be definitely get a job. But, but the most important is when one opens in a medical field, try to do that. Even if you have to be an assistant to a unit clerk on a nursing unit where you run errands, you still get that knowledge base by watching. Yes. And if you can get on at a drugstore, even if you're a clerk, get that advice. I mean, get that experience if you can. Yeah, because when I was there as a clerk, I it wasn't just me stocking shelves. I was in the pharmacy. I learned all these different drug names. And in the future, I might have been a clerk, but I learned so much more than just stocking shelves. I learned about prescriptions, what the name of the drugs were, what they did. And it really just influenced me and helped way more than I thought it would. You'd be surprised, Garrett. I had a test question one time and I was just, you know, I had worked in my dad's drugstore. The test question was, let's take, for instance, Finnegan tablets. Do they make them in any other form? Well, I knew from working in a drugstore that they made them in suppositories, that it came in liquid. So mm-hmm. you're right. Stocking those shelves, one of these days you're going to say, you know what? There is an item such as that. And I know that that's an antihistamine. Yeah. I remember putting that in the cold sec, cough and cold section. So down the road, having this experience is going to help you to answer some questions, you know, on yes. a test one of these days. And you can say, you know what? I already know the answer to that because I've come mm-hmm. across it, but you're absolutely right. Um, seeing from stocking shelves to being a clerk to work in the drive through and, and being a pharmacy tech, you learned a lot. I did. You here. And you didn't, you, you don't realize it until you get out in the real world. Mm-hmm. And one more thing, Garrett, I just wanted to tell everybody that I am on the board of the, the al- pharmacy alumni board for the school of pharmacy at Auburn. Yes. And, uh, my brother and daddy are also Auburn graduates as well as me. Um, and it's a very innovative pharmacy school down there. Yes. Um, it, they're on the cutting edge. Most of our pharmacy schools are, but Auburn is pretty highly ranked. And mm-hmm. if any of these students have any questions, they can walk into a pharmacy and talk to that pharmacist. They would be glad for you to shadow them. Um, yes. But from a standpoint of advice, get a job, try to get a job in the medical field, learn all you can work from the bottom up. It helps mm-hmm. when you have to leave to go to college, give them a good two week notice. It's a very professional thing to do. And soak it up like you did, Garrett. Yes. Any other, any other questions? Or? I think that's it. I just want to thank you for coming on. I, I know I appreciate it. And I know all these kids from Alabama 4-H are definitely going to appreciate it and the insight and advice that you've given them. Okay. And Garrett, one other thing I wanted to tell you is that um, no matter whether, whether it's a drugstore or a hospital like UAB, yes. I worked, I worked kidney transplant heart transplant children yeah. infants and uh, it, it was very innovative so it doesn't matter whether it's a drugstore or a hospital they can all be very innovative um, yes at, at UAB kidney transplant was either number one or number two it was either UAB or Pittsburgh some years Pittsburgh would do more than UAB some years mm-hmm. UAB would do more than Pittsburgh but it was fun working for two innovative places in my lifetime. I've I've been very blessed. And we hope to see you back here one day in this white pharmacy coat. Okay, Garrett? Y'all will.